Hey, what's up everyone? I uh, hope you're having a good day. I just finished up a morning uh, glassing session out here in northern Arizona and I had the thought that I, I wanted to make a video about uh, about wildlife photography and, and in particular uh, trying to really direct this toward hunters. And one of the big questions I always have is when you're in the off season like I am right now, it's in um, it's in April and I don't really hunt turkeys or anything like that. Um, but when you're in kind of the big game off season, sorry, I have to make an adjustment here. You know, what are, what are some of the things that you can do to keep your skills sharp and also just keep you up on, uh, you know, continuing to learn about animal behavior, continuing to learn about, um, uh, how to effectively navigate the outdoors and you know how to keep testing your equipment and making sure it's going to be you know up and running for the next season and one of the best things that we as hunters can do is uh, is wildlife photography and you, most of you know that I'm I'm a photographer by trade and so I, I'm sort of behind the lens uh, most of the time um, you know throughout the day or at least, you know consistently every single day and so a lot of the equipment is already in place but you don't need in order to do wildlife photography you don't need some kind of crazy you know like this is a this is a, a, a Nikon Nikon's 200 to 500 millimeter f or 5.f 5.6 you don't need something like this or you know even the higher end stuff that's like in the range of eight to twelve thousand dollars you don't need stuff like this in order to do wildlife photography and most especially in order for it to benefit your hunting. Um, because from my perspective, even if it's the off season when uh, some of the big game that we like, like elk and deer uh, and antelope lose their uh, kind of their horns and their antlers, you know, for in, in preparation for growth for next year, even though those kind of make the most amazing pictures and they don't have them uh, usually during this time of year, it's still extremely valuable to get out and to learn how to uh, find animals and stalk them. I mean, the truth is that when it comes to at least big game hunting here in the West, probably 90% of what you do is, uh, is observation. So you're behind glass or you're looking in, in country, at least if you're, at least in most cases, if you're doing it right, then you are, uh, then your most of your time is spent in observation and a very small amount of your time in most cases is spent actually stalking the animals. And so in the off season, one of the things I notice is that in the on season, kind of by the end of the season, I really have, my eyes have become more effective at, uh, kind of tracking down animals and finding them, locating movement and, and, and sort of getting a, a better sense of how to find them by the end of the hunting season. But then, you know, you go into off season and you lose some of those skills. And so I've been thinking recently, how can I uh, kind of um, keep up those skills, continue to learn about the animals that I'll potentially be hunting in the next year, and then also uh, you know, have something to show for it at the end of it, which is what photography allows you to do, right? In the same way that we can go out and go hunting and bring back um, the animal that we've harvested, we can do that photographically as well. Now, um, you might be saying, well, that's a pretty expensive endeavor, right? Like, look at that huge lens on the expensive equipment. It's really not true. Like, even... Um, even the, the the setup that I have right now, which is basically just a, you know, it's a Nikon D500. Whoops. It's a Nikon D500, which is a crop sensor, APS-C. So that means it's uh, it's not full frame, which is an advantage for wildlife photographers. I'll explain it in a, in a minute. Um, you know, so you, you have the body, which is probably a $1,500, $1,300 body. I think you could probably get it for about $1,300. So you have the body, plus the lens itself is about 1000 bucks. I got this used on, on eBay for 1000 bucks. It's in really good condition. Um, you don't have to spend tens, you know, $10,000 on uh, the lenses that they're using on National Geographic or something like that, or that you see at, you know, at the professional sports events. Um, you can, and, and even this, even though technically on, from like a professional perspective, this is a sort of a budget build, right? In that you, you do have a relatively inexpensive body, 1500, 1300 bucks, whatever it would be. Um, and then a lens that was about a thousand dollars from a photo from a photographer's perspective, that's inexpensive, but from a hunter's perspective, you don't have, you could do this with um, a Canon Rebel or a Nikon D3400, both crop sensor, with the kit lens, right? Because most of the kit lenses come with um, 
300 millimeter. They're kind of these these uh, these zooms that come, you know, maybe down to 55 millimeters, maybe all the way up to 300, or maybe it's you know 70 to 300. I don't remember exactly, but the kit lenses often have a pretty uh, a pretty good zoom on them. Now, are they the best lenses on earth? Do they have the kind of aperture and f-stop that you would want? No. For I mean, that are ideal. No, it's not. But if if you if what you're interested in is finding an off-season activity that will keep your hunting skills sharp and that you can grow into, right? And maybe you will upgrade your equipment sometime. Then wildlife photography is absolutely a great thing. And so the what I've been trying to do recently is to get out every single morning in uh, just 15 minutes from where I live, basically the closest wilderness areas. And so I go out and I find great glassing points and I just glass until I find animals. And then I put the stock on just like just as I would uh, if I were if I were hunting them with with a rifle. And so the other day I was out here and, you know, I found a group of five does, maybe one, uh, maybe one buck. I couldn't tell if it had lost its antlers yet. Um, but in any case, five mule deer and uh, spotted them up really quickly. And then I stalked in on them to about 75 yards, at which point I, I, I did my photography stuff. But in that process, you're learning, you're not only keeping your skills up, your glassing skills, your stalking skills, but you're also able to observe how do these animals respond to me? How are they responding to pressure? What do they tend to do when they notice that, um, that I'm in their environment? Uh, what are some of the, uh, well, what's some of the body language that can tell me that a deer's about to, um, you know, bust out of there or something like that, or that I've been had or something like that. And all of those skills transfer perfectly over into the world of hunting. Plus, at the end of it, I was able to go, you know, back and post some cool pictures of these does that I that I had found. And uh, you're learning your equipment. You're learning about the process of hunting. And most importantly, you you are doing an activity in the off season that will keep your hunting skills sharp for once the season starts up again, you know, August, September and whatnot. So anyways, just some thoughts I had out here in the field as I was doing some wildlife photography myself. And like I said, you don't have to drop tons of money to be able to do this. You could go out and do this for 300 bucks. Um, without hesitation, I can say that. You'd be buying some used equipment, but who cares? Um, and would it be the best equipment? No, but it would get you out in the field and, um, and it would get you, uh, uh, kind of get you uh, out in the field and continuing to pursue animals, which is what we all uh, love to do. You know, the, I should, I should say this too, that the person that most inspired me here was, uh, is, is Doyle Moss of, of Mossback um, Outfitters. I, uh, my marketing business works quite a bit with Mossback, Arizona. And one thing we did this year is we attended the Salt Lake City Outdoor, uh, the Western Hunting Expo up in Salt Lake City this year. And uh, Mossback has a huge booth there. And maybe you've seen some of the videos that I put out of that, but um, what they also have in a corner is all of Doyle's photography prints that are for sale, often on, on metallic prints, which look really nice. And, and I just, I had a realization at a moment about how, uh, how much, how much, how complimentary wildlife photography is to what we do uh, as hunters and what we love to do, um, you know, in pursuing big game. So anyways, uh, just some thoughts. Hope you all have a good day. If you have any questions at all about uh, kind of photography equipment, if you have like a particular budget in mind, if you say, hey, look, I, want, I have 500 bucks, what's the best I can do? then uh, send me a message and I will give you some really good options and I can give you options across brand names. And so if you're, you're a Canon person, Sony person, Nikon, it doesn't matter. Uh, I can give you those recommendations within whatever kind of price point that you have. So, all right, everyone, have a good day.